So uh, it's nice to see you again, Avni. Welcome, welcome back to UCSC <laughs> virtually. Um, so let's talk a little bit about your your project. Can you? Um, well, first, just what was it about? What 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 is your topic for this project? Um, so more broadly, it's um, focusing on the sort of evolution of carto European cartography in colonial Africa. Um, specifically sort of looking at, you know, how European colonial officials and officers really justified their sort of territorial expansion into the continent using cartography as one of the various methods by which, you know, they implemented their own knowledge and sort of reframed or reshaped their sort of conception of what Africa was at the time. Um, so Largely speaking, that's the main focus of the paper, and it goes into detail with various maps um, from cartographers across Europe um, to just showcase the different, you know, mentalities across Europe, um, but also just to showcase how central the European idea and notions of what, you know, anything outside of Europe was at the time. Mm -hmm. And can you say a little bit about what made you want to study this? Like what, what got you interested in this topic as something to do a thesis project on? Um, so in one previous class of mine, we had to choose a topic to write about for our final paper. And in that class, we had looked at maps, not just of Africa, but of South America, I believe, um, and of like, Asia during like the 17th century. So the idea of how, you know, the maps that we use today, how that, how that shift happened, how that changed and like what you can learn from that, what sort of inferences you can make about the people who made them as well as, you know, circumstances politically involved in the regions that those maps really focus on was something I thought would be an interesting topic to that kind of divulge, um, especially for a thesis where you can, you have the opportunity to really expand upon that, um, sort of those questions. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Speaking of, of, you know, doing this as a thesis and having the, the time to work on it, um, this was entirely a project done during the COVID times, right? So can you talk a little bit about how you found sources and, and you know, what some of the, the challenges were of that and, and, you know, how you went about finding the material that you used? Yeah, so because a lot of this, you know, focuses on maps, a lot of, we're so lucky to be in a very digital era right now. Um, so there were several archives you know, that I was able to access online, including like the Library of Congress. And even there were sites that were, you know, they actually have been auctioning maps, um, which is something that I've kind of been looking into a little bit after this project was over in case I wanted to continue it further. But there are entire archives of just maps from across the globe at different eras. So I used a lot of those primarily. Um, before, I think we have like some books here at home. My dad, my father's an avid sort of collector. So he has maps of, you know, within like cartography, books on cartography. So I was able to access a few of those as well, along with um, sort of just general conversations historiographically about like what cartography is and like how it's, you know, been studied over the years. Um, but some of the most interesting sources I think were of um, explorers at the time and sort of their records of how they sort of charted the, the land that they were surveying and just seeing how over time some of those assumptions were either correct and have been continued or how they were completely you know, reneged and deemed fictitious later on, like one of the mountain ranges in, in you know, West Africa. So, um, was for a very long time charted um but you know by the 18th or 19th century a cartographer and explorer said this is this is incorrect like this, 
this mountain range doesn't exist. <laughs> so I <laughs> think like that was a really, really interesting um, source and piece of information to sort of talk about. Do you remember the name of it? What's the what's the mythical mountain range called? It was called, they named at the time, I think, uh, it was called the Mountains of Kong. Um, it was based on a settlement that, you know, the, the explorer, I think, I believe his name is Mungo Park. He had explored that Niger, the Niger River, and he came across the settlement that was named Kong, and he just happened to see, you know, a mountain range or something, and he said, ah, this is, this is now part of the cartography. And apparently, you know, famous cartographers like James Reynolds, like, used that information in some of his maps, earlier maps of Africa. But, you know, a century or two later, other explorers surveyed the same area and realized that there were no mountain ranges in this <laughs> particular area, in this region. And so they were very confused at first, but, you know, I guess the technology or the surveying, you know, tactics were a lot or had improved by then, so they were able to correct it. Um, but for an entire century, that map, that mountain range appears on quite a few, quite a few maps of West Africa. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, can you, you know, historians usually work with um, with textual sources, right? That's sort of the the traditional. That's what we think of historians looking at, or you know, letters, diaries, laws, stuff like that. Can you? Talk a little bit just about like how you read a map as a historical source. Like what does that show us? Even, you know, just if, if there's specific examples you remember from the thesis project, um, like how do you, what do you see in a map that allows you to answer historical questions? Well, first, um, if you look at maps that were made say in, you know, the 15, 16 centuries, you'll, see that in comparison to modern day maps, the structure and like the, the charting of the continent itself is so different from what we know presently. So you gain a sense of what the techniques to chart these continents and land masses were, especially at a time when, you know, the age of exploration was still relatively new. It was still, people were still navigating these parts of the world that they had really never been to before. Um, so you see sort of the evolution of the physical changes of the map in terms of just how the continent is drawn, how it's um, charted. But by far, I think when it comes to historian, you sort of see, especially in the context of, you know, colonialism, that's a European colonialism, um, you see how the charting of this territory really reflects what European colonialism was all about, which was, you know, essentially the expansion of territory. Um, so one of the things that I talk about um, and use is our maps where in the early stages of, you know, the exploration of the continent, you see settlements along the coast of the entire continent. And slowly, you know, as time goes on and as the centuries, Past, you see how more and more detail is included in the interior as they travel further. Um, so for a long time, there was just an empty space in the middle of the continent where a lot of maps have just used a cartouche or like some kind of cartoon or some sort of display to just fill in that space um, because they didn't know what was there at the time. And eventually by the time you get to 1885, which is the Berlin Conference, which more colloquially is a scramble for Africa, you see not only have all those spaces been filled in, but how each European country has sectioned out, you know, their claim of, of the continent and, you, and just how vastly different that was from just a barren space in the beginning um, to a fully fledged sort of state belonging to either Germany or Belgium or Britain or France or, you know, any of the other um, powers involved in that decision. So historically, that's one of, you know, the one of the most, I think, profound sort of ways to, to view this, especially in the context of, you know, colonialism um, in a continent of, such as Africa. Yeah. And so is that, was that kind of the, the big sort of takeaway argument? Is that what, what, what your conclusion is for the whole project? Yeah, I think that was one of the questions that I definitely wanted to answer um, because there's a there was a doctrine 
um, that they used to justify, you know, their expansion, which was terra nullis, which means essentially empty land. Um, and this sort of doctrine was used and, uh, and sort of implicated in various, you know, across the, across the globe, just because, you know, they felt that the people, the inhabitants of this land weren't using it correctly or weren't, you know, they didn't know what to do with it the way that you know, Europeans supposedly did. Um, so to actually compare that ideology and put it and view it visually on a map was something that I had never really considered before um, prior to this project. And it's something that I definitely have learned a lot more about um, having researched this and really looked at and analyzing um, several of the maps that I used during for this project. Wow, and so those those blank spaces that are so important to the colonial justifications, like were these actually blank spaces, or or was it just that Europeans didn't know who was living there and, and what was there? I mean, I'm sure people were living there. They were, <laughs> people were living there, minding their own business, um, you know, going about their way of life, and then, but the, you know, Europeans didn't really deem it as necessary or, you know, worthwhile and sort of, you know, leaving them alone and letting them be. Um, so to them, it was just empty. It didn't really have any significance, um, which, you know, is unfortunate, but. Yeah. Um, wow, so the maps lie and then the lie leads to <laughs> justifications of colonialism. It's amazing. Um, well, great, thanks so much for, um, sharing a little bit about the project. Uh, it was it was great working with you on it. And um, and it's great to see that you're now in grad school, right? We should. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, uh, well, congratulations on a great project. Thank you. It was really great working with you as well.